Now that we've run 3 dd Convolve, we can look at the statistical data set at output and map it onto an anatomical image. So let's open up AFNI. And for an underlay, let's leave this anatomical image as is. It'll give us some sense about what part of the anatomy our statistics correspond to. So select stats.ft as your overlay data set. Now right now it's pretty messy. We haven't really applied any thresholding, so that's why everything seems to be colored in right now. Notice right here that we have our overlay subric. Okay, right now it's an f-stat, which is an omnibus f-test, meaning that it tests for significance at each voxel based on all of the regressors of interest that we input into our model. But we're going to change this to this VREL coefficient, which is the beta weight estimated at each individual voxel. Just going through the rest of these subrics, there's also t-stat, that's a map of t-statistics to each voxel for this condition, and an f-stat, which is a map of f-statistics to each voxel for the visual condition. Same thing for the auditory condition and the same thing for the contrast of visual minus auditory. So right now, let's leave the overlay as the VREL coefficient or beta weight. And select the threshold pop-down menu and make that VREL t-stat, okay? This thresholding means we're only gonna keep voxels which pass a certain t threshold. Right now, it's a t value of 0.5. So any voxel that has a t value of 0.5 or greater is going to be kept. Maybe we want that to be a little bit more strict, so we're not looking at just every single insignificant voxel. So we click on this power sign down here and select 1, which just makes it go up by an order of magnitude. So from 0.5 to 5. So right now we're looking at a map which only includes voxels that have a t-statistic of 5 or greater. Also notice this auto range has been set on. And what that means is that if we let's say right click up here, this part of the color scale, it's gonna mark as red, you know, the most extreme value in this map is about 53.9. And the most extreme negative value is negative 54.8. That's gonna be marked dark blue. So we might wanna actually make this a little bit stricter just because you know, it doesn't necessarily look all that great. If we bump it down to maybe 10 or so, you start to get some more meaningful individuation. Okay, so yellow is brighter, things more in dark green correspond to a negative T statistic. If you only want to look at positive statistics, click on this positive box and you'll only see positive values. The thing is now the bottom of this scale now corresponds to a T value of zero and the highest one is going to correspond to a T value of however high that is. You can see that if you right click here value is close to zero, and up here the value is close to 9.9. .9. Let's increase that a little bit more, 15, or actually let's go down a little bit. And now it starts to be a little bit more interpretable. So that's the whole idea behind thresholding and behind coloring in significant voxels. Notice here, the overlay is the actual beta weight. So here at this particular coordinate, we have a beta weight of 3.45 for that voxel and a T value of 15.68. Let's go to a more negative voxel. Let's uncheck positive and let's go to a negative voxel like this. So this is actually a negative beta weight and it's 0.48 and the T statistic is negative 0.63. Remember we're only looking at voxels because we thresholded them as having a T statistic of greater than or more extreme than positive five or negative five. You can also do that for the auditory, but let's look at this V minus A contrast. Set the overlay as a coefficient or beta weight and the threshold as a T statistic. So again, just keeping our auto thresholding the same. You can see that right here, let's say, let's just focus on a voxel down right there. Just click somewhat randomly. The overlay value is 0.25 for that contrast, okay? So let's verify that. Let's make the overlay, uh, this visual right here, which is 0.96. And now let's change it again to the auditory, which is 0.71. So 0.96 minus 0.71 should give us a contrast of about 0.25 or 0.26. That's the idea behind statistical maps, both beta weights and t-statistics. And this gives you a good sense of 
when you overlay the coefficient and then make the threshold the t-statistic, that will give you a sense of which statistically significant voxels have what amount of beta weight fluctuation, either positive or negative.